So this is our next topic that is climate form two topic. And so there is quite a lot to cover. And so you can make use of the subtitles at the bottom of your video frame. And so this is what we are going to cover. Uh, we covered weather in form one. And so you can take some time and go back and look at weather before you start this topic. And so we are going to look at the distinction between weather and climate, factors that influence climate, distribution, and characteristics of climatic regions of Kenya and the world, causes and effects, and possible solutions to aridity and desertification, and finally causes and impact of climate change on physical and human environment. And so we are first going to define what is weather that we defined in Form 1. So now we are going to, de to define climate, which is the average weather conditions of a given place over a long period of time, usually 30 to 35 years. So what are the factors that influence climate? You can study these along the factors that uh, influence weather and see what the, the differences you can spot. And so uh, we have latitude and it influences temperature whereby low latitudes have high temperature and high latitudes have low temperature mm -hmm. due to the angle at which the sun rays strike the earth and the distance traveled by the sun rays. And so we have intertropical convergence. Here, it's a low pressure belt between equator where trade winds converge. So it influences rainfall in some of these ways. So places further from equator experience one rainy season when the sun is overhead and a long dry season when the sun is in the southern hemisphere and so regions near equator have two seasons of heavy rainfall because they experience passage of itcz twice so altitude it influence it influences temperature whereby at low altitude temperature is high while at high altitude it's lower due to the thickness of atmosphere determining the number of particles to store heat and distance from space where terrestrial radiation is, is lost. So our next to consider is the distance from the sea. So it influences temperature whereby places in temperate regions near the sea experience low temperatures during summer, onshore winds blowing over cold ocean water and taking the cooling influence on adjacent land because the water is heated at a slower rate than land. And places near the sea also experience higher temperatures during the winter or cool season due to the sea breezes carrying warmer hair, hair to the land because water loses it at a slower rate than the land. And of course, temperatures in the interior of continents tend to be high in summer and very low in winter due to lack of the, the marine influence we've discussed. So another factor is ocean currents. And so temperature whereby costs, uh, it influences temperature whereby costs which are washed by warm ocean currents are warmer while those washed by cool ocean currents are cooler due to the onshore winds being either warmed or cooled and then taking the warmth or coolness of land. And so at uh, this point I'll take a short break to give you a hint while you study this topic try to relate because we're going to look at fishing very soon um try to relate what we are discussing here with fishing especially when we are studying the international fishing ground so let's continue aspects direction of slope in relation to sunlight and the rain bearing winds its effect on temperature is more pronounced in the northern and southern hemisphere so uh, in the northern and southern hemisphere, the slopes facing the sun are warmer, while the sl those facing away are cooler. When you try to sketch the globe uh, and map out where the equator runs so that you get the northern and the southern hemisphere, you'll be able to uh, see these in a vi visual manner. Winds and air masses. Wind blowing from a warm region warms the region it's passing over, and if blowing from a cool region cools the region it's passing over, since wind is a medium of transfer of heat. Uh, we looked at sea breezes and 
kata bati queens in uh, a topic in form one. Yeah, the topic is linked uh, at the top of your video. So configuration of coastline. Coastal regions across the path of moisture laden winds receive higher rainfall because winds deposit moisture on land. Forests. Forests. Forested areas experience a microclimate whereby temperature is lower due to the shades of trees, reducing solar insulation reaching the ground, and rainfall is higher due to a high rate of evapotranspiration and friction between trees and rain-bearing winds. And finally, human activities. Man has caused deforestation in the process of creating room for settlement and agriculture, which has caused drop in rainfall amounts leading to semi-arid conditions. Uh, we also see man has constructed dams across rivers and done afforestation, which cause has caused semi-arid regions to become wetlands. These are the factors that influence climate. And uh, our next subtopic is the distribution of climatic regions of Kenya and the world. And uh, of course, a reminder, you can look at these notes in detail from the geography app available on your Google Play Store. And that is the icon, the brown one. That's the icon. That's how you can uh, know which uh, we are talking about. So let's proceed. So let's look at the distribution. This is in Kenya. We have the modified tropic, modified equatorial. We have the modified tropical. We have the tropical continental climate. We have the tropical climate. We have the tropical northern climate and we have the desert climate. This map is very key to what we are going to look at in detail in a bit. So please pause the video and try to map it out on a piece of paper. And you can also consider reviewing your textbook or the same diagram. So let's proceed. We'll start with the modified equatorial climate. This is experienced along the coast and along the coast from Somali, Tanzania border and Lake Victoria Basin regions around the lake. These are the characteristics of both along the coast and along the Lake Victoria Basin, uh, consider pausing the video to look at the characteristics. We are, we've, we've cleared with the modified equatorial, so we proceed to the modified tropical climate, which is experienced in central highlands, east and west of the Rift Valley. And in these areas, they experience a mean annual temperatures average between 17 and 27 degrees Celsius. The humidity is moderate. They receive rainfall throughout the year. They receive orographic rainfall caused by the southeast trade winds. And lower, warmer slopes and cooler, higher slopes due to the modification by the altitude. Another reminder, take time to look at the map and map it out. We have the tropical continental or desert climate, which is experienced in about half of Kenya in most of north and northeast, most of east and that is south of Kenya. We have the tropical climate, which is experienced in Narok, South Taita and Kuala regions. We have the tropical northern climate, which is experienced in a small area in the northwestern part of Kenya, bordering Uganda. And so, and finally, we are going to look at the distribution and the characteristics of climatic regions of the world. 
we have uh before we get to this maybe we can briefly mention look at the contrast with kenya so this is kenya we have the modified equatorial modified tropical tropical continental tropical tropical northern and the desert climate uh on a wild scale we have the hot climates we have the warm climates we have the cool climates we have the very cold climates we have the mountain climates and we have the micro or local climate climates so we are going to start with the hot climates uh, you need to take a take time and look at the maps mapped out from your recommended course books so um the hot climates they experienced within the tropical latitudes and uh, they again subdivided into the equatorial climate the tropical monsoon climate the savanna climate or sudan type the tropical desert climate the tropical marine climate and uh, again we've mentioned the experience within the tropical latitudes and so we are going to look at the subdivisions one by one so we have the equatorial climate which is experienced in the following areas the amazon basin in south america along the west coast of africa southern parts of nigeria through cameroon gabon central africa republic congo to ziar we have the southeast asia in malaysia indonesia and a stretch between burma and vietnam so where uh, you can look at the characteristics you can pause the video and try to make notes maybe something to uh notice there is there are no seasons and there is low pressure all year round the tropical monsoon climate which is found in the following areas the southeast asia in parts of pakistan and also along the northern coastal region of australia these are the characteristics you can pause the video to look at that keenly we have the savanna climate or the sudan type which is the largest natural climatic region in africa so it's found in the following areas that's africa um extending through east africa to the northern part of south africa a broad belt in northern australia that is outside africa so these are the characteristics the next one is the tropical desert climate which is found on the western coasts of continents washed by cold ocean currents so the the following you have in the arabian desert we have the sahara kalahari and namib deserts in africa we have the atacama desert mojave in us we have the jo in jordan syria iraq saudi arabia and these are the characteristics uh note it's a desert so the humidity is low and the evaporation rate is high you can also note that there are sandstorms uh commonly experienced uh also notice that the rainfall is localized and we have clear skies the last one under the hot or tropical climates is the tropical marine climate which is found on windward slopes of islands and coastal areas on the east of coast continents under the influence of the southeast trade winds as the following areas listed so these are the characteristics we have summer temperatures which are very high we have convection reef in summer we have dry winters due to winds being offshore and the winters are cool it's also divided this is from our last topic so we're going to look at this this is what we were looking at so we are going to look at the 
warm climates. So we've covered hot climates and uh, under hot climates we have uh, subdivisions that's the equatorial climate, the tropical monsoon climate, the savanna or Sudan type, we have the tropical desert climate and we have the tropical marine climate. So the warm climates uh, they border tropical climates and they experience moderate temperatures lower than of tropical climates. So they are situated in the zone of divergence of trade winds and westeries. They are divided again to four, which is um, the warm temperate western margin climate. We have the warm temperate continental climate. We have the warm temperate eastern marginal climate. And we have the warm temperate deserts. And so we are going to look at uh, briefly one by one, just taking keynotes on the region so that we're able to map that out on the world map. So the warm temperate western margin or the Mediterranean climate, it is found on the western margin of or sides of continents in the following areas. That's the southern Europe and northern Africa in the lands bordering the Mediterranean Sea. The southwest tip of Africa around Cape Town, we also have the central Chile, Chile in South America, we have the southwest and south uh, Australia. We, these are the characteristics. So at this point, we in the warm climates, we have seasons. You can notice, maybe you can Draw that out. So we have seasons. We have the seasons. Here they are. So let's proceed. So uh, we look at the warm temperate interior or the continental climate. This is also this is found in the interior of the continents in the following areas. Uh, the steppe land in USSR, the belt of South Africa. We have the prior lands of Canada and USA. We have the Pampas lands of Argentina. And we have the Dodens of Australia. So I think this question is highly examinable. We'll, we'll see how it marries with uh, our next topic, which is vegetation. Just the, the these specific details yeah just these specific details see how they marry with our next topic so uh again they are in the warm climates uh we have the seasons so you can take a look at the key details we have the warm climates again and uh, the third subdivision is the warm temperate eastern marginal climate uh, which is also known as the China type, which is experienced on the eastern margins of continents in the following areas. So this China, eastern China, southern, so southern Japan, so this of Australia, America, South Southern America, it is in southern Brazil. Yeah, so these are the characteristics. And then finally, we have the warm temperate deserts, which are also known as the mid latitude desert climate. It is experienced in the following areas the Nevada and Utah states of USA. We have the Patagonia in Southern America. We have the Gobi Desert. We have it in Turkey. These are the characteristics briefly. And so, these are the warm climates which actually border the tropical climates and they experience moderate temperatures lower than those of the tropical climates we are going forward to the cold climates which differ from the home, home climates by having definite seasonal variations in temperature and they are subdivided into the cool temperate Western margin, we have the cool temperate 
continental interior, we have the cool temperate eastern margin. So we look at uh, one, one, each of them, each of the subdivision briefly. So it's also known as the British type. It's under coastal influence, so it's found in the following areas. And these are its characteristics. We'll proceed to the cool temperate continental interior. Remember, you can actually pause the video or um, get yourself the geography app. The points are laid out there clearly and as briefly as in this presentation. So we have the cool, cool temperate continental interior, which is also called the Siberian type, which is found in the following areas, Alaska and most of Canada, then the Eurasia covering Sweden, Finland, Poland, Germany, across former USSR to Kamchatka Peninsula in, in the east. These are the characteristics. You can note they have long winters with long nights. And they are generally short summers. Just to point out a few. Our last subdivision under cool climate, we have the cool temperate eastern margin, which is also known as the Laurentia type. Areas the northern USA, south of Canada, southern Argentina, we have the northern South Korea, we have northern China, central and north Japan, and eastern Siberia. So don't confuse that with this, these are one which is also the cool temperate continental interior, which is also known as the Siberian type. So uh, I hope you are noticing the, the key, key details just for your information. So we we'll look at the cool temperate eastern margin. These are the characteristics. They have cold winters, uh, snow precipitation in winter, high humidity in summer. They have long warm summers, and these are the cool climates of the world. So we have the cool temperate western margin the cool temperate continental interior and we have the cool temperate eastern margin so the very cold climates is also known as polar desert climates or arctic and antarctic climates which are actually found beyond the arctic circle and uh, south of equator so they are classified into two tundra and polar climates uh, tundra climate is on the following areas coast of North America bordering, bordering Arctic Ocean northern part of America from Alaska through Canada to Greenland so from north coast of Scandinavia to the northeast of Russia to the Baffin Island so these are the characteristics they have long cold winters. They have precipitation in form of rain and snow in winter. And so we look at the second subdivision of the cold climates. This is the polar climates. It's experienced in the poles in the interior of Iceland and Greenland and Antarctica. So the temperature is permanently below freezing point, there is permanent snow cover and ice on the ground, there are snowstorms uh, and continuous winter nights and summer days with exception of equinox when sun rises above the horizon. We have mountain climates which has suggested its experience on high mountain ranges of the world. So. Areas Mount Kenya, Mount Ruenzori, Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Everest, the Atlas Mountains in Africa, 
the Rockies of North America, and the Alps of Europe, and finally the Himalayas in Asia. This is the temperature. These are, these are the characteristics. The, the temperature decreases with increase in altitude. Temperatures ranges from cool to cold. Rainfall increases with altitude. Windward slopes are wetter than the leeward slopes. Local winds are common and blow up the slope during the day and down slope at night. And finally, we have the micro or local climates. So this is climate experienced within a small area, which is slightly different compared to the general climate of the area. It occurs on the immediate surroundings and within some phenomena on the earth's surface. So microclimates can be found in the following areas. Uh, that is within and around a, a forest, around urban areas, around man-made lakes. And so we can take time to look at that. So a quick review of what we just looked at. The climatic regions of the world and these are the hot climates the warm climates the cool climates the very cold climates the mountain climates and the micro or local climates which we've looked at as our last one so let's look at the causes and effects and possible solutions to aridity and the certification so before we do that look at the causes and effects uh, we need to note that aridity is a state of land being deficient of moisture, leading to little or no vegetation. While desertification is a process in which desert-like conditions slowly and steadily encroach on formerly productive agricultural, agricultural land. These are the causes of aridity. Low and reliable rainfall high temperatures which cause high rates of evaporation, where a place is washed by ocean currents causing moist onshore winds to cool and then drop moisture of the sea and reach the land as dry winds. That is like in the Kalahari where onshore westerlies cross the cold Benguela current. Some areas to lie on the rain shadow, hence rain winds drop most of their moisture on the windward side and they drop on the leeward side are warmed and hold onto moisture causing dry conditions. We have location of some places being very far from the sea causing them to be far removed from the wet onshore winds that's such as the, the Gobi Desert and we have the where hot dry winds blow over a region causing drying effect on land. And uh, probably finally, we have the where cool air descends causing no rain because cool air has to rise before condensation takes place. And so these are the physical uh, natural causes. We're now going to look at the human activities that cause aridity and desertification. So this is when people clear forests, which causes rainfall to exceed infiltration which interferes with the water cycle. Uh, two, keeping large numbers of animals which exceed the carrying capacity of land. So they eat vegetation leaving the land bare exposing the land to soil erosion. So we have poor agricultural practices such as over cultivation, monoculture, burning which leads to soil erosion. And four, industrialization which release greenhouse gases such as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide to the atmosphere which absorb more heat making the earth's temperature to rise. So reclamation of water logged areas which lowers the water table causing arid conditions to set in plants where plants can't access groundwater. And number six poor irrigation methods when evaporation takes place and salt from below are brought to the surface and are deposited on the top soil making the soil salty and hence unable to support plants. We have infertile soils which support little or no vegetation. 
these are the effects. We've looked at the causes. So these are the effects. So we have infertile soil, which cannot support vegetation. And since the soils are infertile, so there is low agricultural production. Uh, coupled with insufficient rainfall which leads to farming we have shortage of water from domestic and industrial use we have migration of people from areas affected by aridity leading to population pressure and conflicts eventually we have destruction of vegetation which exposes land to soil erosion these are the possible solutions to aridity one afforestation and deforestation because trees protect soil from erosion, they increase uh, increase runoff and release moisture to the atmosphere, which leads to uh, increased rainfall. Number two, we have adoption, adopting soil conservation measures such as terracing, contour plowing, planting cover crops. We have uh, number three, rearing a number of animals which is proportion to the current capacity of the land. Number four, we have irrigating dry lands. And finally, we have introduction of energy saving stores to reduce demand for wood fuel, which reduce deforestation. So uh, as a bonus, we're going to look at climate change. And uh, we can define these as the continuous changes in the climatic climatic states such as temperature and precipitation over time. Uh, it's quite a big deal. It's uh, hitting the headlines of late. So everyone, every world leader is speaking of climate change, climate change. So these are the natural causes so that we know how. So variations in the Earth's orbital characteristics, variation in the atmospheric carbon dioxide, we have volcanic eruptions and we have variation in the solar output. So what we'll focus on is the human causes so that we can see our responsibility in the continuous changes of climatic states in the world today. So human causes, one, burning of fossil fuels in industries, transportation, electric, city generation contributes 65 percent of additional carbon dioxide in the atmosphere which is the main greenhouse gas two burning of vegetation uh, which also adds carbon dioxide to the atmosphere we have clearing large tracts of forest for agriculture settlement and so on which reduces the main deposit system for carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by photosynthesis. So, number four, industrial developments which add gases like methane, nitrous oxide, and those containing chloride and chloro chlorocarbons which damage the ozone layer, which filters a greater percentage of ultraviolet radiation given off by the sun, which causes the average temperatures on the earth to rise so um these are the consequences of climate change we have the global warming we have increased trend for the result of high temperatures um so wet areas become wetter and the dry areas become drier so effects on agriculture by causing crop growing areas to shift to cooler altitudes and latitudes uh, water storage when climate becomes dry causes less water to infiltrate and less water leads to water to feed rivers. Uh, we have submergence of coastal areas causing flooding when uh, the Antarctic and the Arctic glaciers melt and water is added to the oceans. Uh, number six, heat waves due to increased temperature which leads to death of people. We have the receding and disappearance of ice caps on mountains. We have abnormal um, growth of plants due to increased amounts of carbon dioxide. So it increases the rate of photosynthesis, which 
leads to increased yields and crops. And so, uh, well, the crops, when the rate increases, the soils become, uh, are not able to manage the, to sustain the high rates of plant growth. So the soil quality goes down. So are there solutions to climate change? Yeah, there could be. So we have afforestation and deforestation. We have use of energy saving stoves. Uh, this is to save uh, the trees. We have the use of alternative sources of energy, um, which are environmental friendly. That is what can use solar instead of fossil fuel. So proper maintenance of vehicles to reduce emissions from the exhausts. And uh, uh, something that is arguably debatable, use of public transport to reduce the amount of fossil fuel used and hence the amount of carbon dioxide added, added into the atmosphere. So our topic was quite lengthy. So I hope you made use of the subtopics uh, to navigate through the interesting or the areas you like to focus on. So that's the end of our class. So see you in our next class.